Hi, we are Engineering Brothers. In our previous class, we have completed our problem 2 for our rotational system. Now, we are aiming to complete our third problem over here in our present class. Now, you simply ask me a very vital question over here. Why do we consider a translational system in our present system or in our present problem over here? to state that fact that I don't have any other problems for our rotational systems but as per my promise I want to complete the same number of problems for our rotational systems as well that is why I have taken the analogous concept over here you can see that I have got a chart and how do I get or how do I concentrate it or created this chart that is very very important and if you have missed my previous videos on our translational and notational system for our analogous concept you can do follow that videos as well on that videos we have thoroughly make a chart or make a relation in between our translational and rotational system so before i do convert this translational system into rotational system i should simply summarize this chart once again i do know that for our rotational system if i do apply the torque that is equivalent with our force for our translational system similarly for our angular displacement that is been considered as theta that is been analogous with our displacement for our linear displacement that is x now if you take the derivative or first derivative or d dt of our angular displacement i will get the angular velocity that is omega and that is same with our translational system velocity which is dx by dt which is nothing but the v okay and our angular displacement and angular velocity are analogous for our translational and rotational system similarly for our rotational system the angular acceleration that is been considered as our alpha that is analogous with our translational system that is the same one which is acceleration and which is small a now in our passive elements we have got three important elements are here that is mass spring dashford for our translational system mass spring this one is dashford okay so mass for our translational system that is equivalent with our moment of inertia for our rotational system which has been considered as our j and for our translational system that has been considered as our dashford which we have configured as our beta or b okay that is equivalent with our rotational system b and what is the rotational system b if you do consider the viscous friction coefficient that is equivalent with that and for the last one we have got the spring stiffness for our translational system which is k and that is equivalent with our shaft stiffness for our uh, rotational system which has been considered also as our k so this is our analogous chart for our translational and rotational system over here you can feel that i just do require to convert this translational system into rotational system and after that i will do convert or i will do get the transfer function which is our final destination so i want to give you the much needed consideration over here by using this table i just do require to convert the translational system into rotational system that is our first step which is i just do require to convert the translational system into rotational system okay trans to our rotational okay translational system to rotational system after that we have got the equivalent block diagram just like this one that is our first step in our next step we just do require to find out the possibilities to or what is the problem statement over here 
we have got the problem statement for our translational system but for our rotational system that problem statement should be i am going to find out the transfer function which is nothing but the torque divided by our theta 1 s and which one is theta 1 s i will go to that concept later part or do later but i am trying to find out the transfer function for our rotational system so the procedure or the analogy is quite simple the first step is i just do required to convert this translational system into rotational system that is our first step and in our second step our ultimate aim is to find out the transfer function and that will be the conclusion for our rotational system i do know that no other channels and no other even books also uh, there are not a lot of rotational systems are present there that is why i just do require to use this procedure to create some problems and after that after creating these problems after creation of these problems i will do complete that sort of problem and that is the most challenging part for our uh, engineering brother classes that is why engineering brother classes are always very very special and you can feel that no other channels are doing this type of videos over here so what are you waiting for please do subscribe our channel because i do require some support because without your support we can't go for the longer length and i do know that uh, i can uh, simply analyze this type of concepts because this type of concepts are very very essential or important for our future scope of studies in our today's generations uh, they are looking forward for our a lot of computational things and there are a lot of softwares and a lot of um, ai systems are there but if you don't understand the logic behind these concepts you are not been able to understand uh, the future uh, technologies because this type of technologies are very very essential so without understanding the control concepts or without un understanding these concepts you are not been able to understand the robotics so it is always better to go for step by step analogies if you do consider the step by step analogies you can get the total concepts that is required for our future scope of work and i want to repeat this that the procedure is very simple why do i consider uh, the rotational system for our present sorry why do i consider the translational system for our rotational system concepts i have considered a translational system the mass spring dashboard system you can understand or identify that now i just do require to convert this translational system into rotational system why because in our uh, control system books or i have considered lot of books over there on that uh, on that um, said books there are not of there are not not a lot of uh, rotational systems are present over there to solve our problems so i have got the alternative way to create a problem and after that if you have created a problem after creation of this problem i would like to find out the transfer function as well and that will be our trans uh, a rotational system problem 3 i want to repeat the procedure once again because only engineering brothers can handle this type of uh, videos you can feel that no other youtube channels are present over here uh, to concentrate it on our rotational systems over there and as for my promise i want to complete all the systems or all the logics uh, that are essential for our control analogies and if you do follow our previous videos you can get my point that i don't skip any part of the solution or any part of the concepts over there so what are you waiting for please do subscribe our channel hit the like hit the bell icon for more updates and stay tuned with our channel so once again i do like to summarize our proceeding first i have got a translational system why because uh, there are not a lot of rotational systems are present in our given uh, books or in our control system books are there so i have got a new path to create 
or to convert the translational system into rotational system by using this chart and how do i get this chart if you do follow our previous videos on how to uh, make the bridge or how to make the connection in between our translational and rotational system you can get my point that how do i get this chart over there if you have missed that videos please do follow that videos so definitely i have got the chart by using this chart i would like to change this translational system into rotational system that is our first step i have written over here and the next step is our ultimate aim is to find out the output divided by input which is the transfer function or which is the definition for our transfer function uh, more specifically for the rotational system and our ultimate aim to aim is to find out this ratio for our rotational system okay this is our first step uh, in our next step i would like to start the proceedings over here okay i want to give you additional two minutes to note down up to this one and after that uh, i think uh, there is nothing to write down over here but you should think the steps the first step is i do require to convert the translational system into rotational system just arrange in your mind that what are the crucial steps to complete or to be accordingly consider our rotational system. So the first step is I just do require to convert the translational system into rotational system. After we have got the rotational system diagram, our ultimate aim is to find out the transfer function, which is this one. And that will be the problem three for our consideration. And you can feel that no other channels are present uh, compare with us that is why please do follow our videos if you want to understand the total concepts for our beautiful subject uh, uh, for our control system okay the time starts now In our previous step, I have discovered what are the crucial steps to convert our translational system into rotational system and how do I finally conclude our present problem which is our problem 3 for our rotational system. And I have given you uh, the concept of our analogous one which is the bridge between our translational and rotational system that is why as I have got no problems uh, in our present book or in our present uh, control system considerations. That is why I have chosen a translational system diagram. The next step is quite simple. I do require to convert this translational system into rotational system. And after that, we would like to find out the transfer function for the said rotational system over there. So first step is I just do require to convert the translational into rotational system that is why 
I am going to erase the second step as I have written. I would like to write it over here as the transfer function should be our torque divided by theta 1 s that is our main focus for our transfer function analogy. Okay. Now you can write that the viscous friction coefficient or dashpot that is been written as in terms of F also. So these are our same concept. Okay. You can consider the B, you can consider the F also. Okay. Now let us convert our current trans translational system into rotational system. Now to go for that, I just do convert or do understand the translational system first. If you apply or if you do apply the force at our mass M2, there is certainly a displacement is happened there and the displacement is been taken as X. Okay. And you can see that in between our two masses, M1 and M2, there are two elements or passive elements are present there. The one element is been considered as our dashboard dashboard which is if and the another one is our spring which is k okay and as you can see that the another mass is been present over here so quite naturally if you take that there is certain displacement on this body also and i should consider that displacement is our x1 okay if you do apply the force at mass m2 if i do apply the force the m2 is getting disturbed and because of the disturbance the dashboard and the spring which is placed in between our m1 and m2 are also getting disturbed and because of the disturbance in this common part of these two passive elements the disturbance has transferred towards our m1 as well and that disturbance is ultimately transferred towards our k1 and that disturbance is intact over there and there is no element is present over here you can see that the permanent connection has brought down through this wall that is why the element is no longer the disturbance factor is no longer transferable and i have considered that initially the given problem if you do apply the force on this mass or on this mass m2 then the displacement x is happening there and that disturbance if you do apply the force has transferred from right hand side to left hand side and the body of m1 has also has a displacement which is or linear displacement which is x1 i have considered that factor as x1 now how to convert this translational system into rotational system for our rotational system if you want to apply something we would like to apply the torque because the torque is equivalent with our force just like this one i am going to draw the rotational system first at this position for our force for our rotational system the consideration should be our torque the consideration is our torque first i would like to apply the torque on our rotational body and the mass is nothing but the moment of inertia so instead of writing this as m2 i should consider this as our moment of inertia block which is our j2 j2 okay and what seems to be the displacement at the 
position of our displacement i should consider that one as a angular displacement theta as for our rotational system the displacement that is equivalent with our angular displacement you can see that according to the chart okay now we have got the f2 under our m2 okay and we do know that f2 is nothing but for our rotational because of the presence of our viscous fluid the viscous friction coefficient will be present there and i should take this as our f2 so this is our f2 because of the presence for a viscous fluid the viscous friction coefficient is present on this rotating body so at the rotating body of j2 there is some certain viscous fluid are present there and because of that presence of a viscous fluid the viscous friction is happened because under this the solid surface is surface is present over here so this indicates the f2 now if you do move on towards our left hand side for our diagram the f is nothing but the for our translational system this is been considered as our dashboard dashboard system but equivalently that is been the same which is for our presence for a viscous fluid the viscous friction coefficient will be present there so this f is still remains same in between our two blocks so this is nothing but the same one which is our f and for our spring stiffness for our translational system that is for our rotational system that one should be our shaft stiffness so this one should be the same logic which is our shaft stiffness which is k now if you do move on towards our next block the m1 is the mass for the equivalent consideration or for the analogous consideration that is another block which is our which is should be our j1 for the instead of writing that one as a mass m1 i should write it as our j1 so this is our j1 okay now the uh, another factor is been present over here the same one because of the presence for our viscous fluid the viscous friction coefficient is happened on that said moving body of our j1 also and that friction is been considered as our f1 but for our translational system that is also the f1 these two are our same okay now for the last one we have got another spring for our translational system and that is replaced with our shaft stiffness for our rotational body as well which is k1 okay and in order to consider the displacement more specifically for our rotational system that should be our angular displacement so for our body x m2 for the translational system we have considered that linear displacement is x and that is replaced by theta according to our chart and for our moving body for our j1 the displacement or more specifically the angular displacement should be our theta1 okay and here is the permanent structure is been applied over there so this is our complete diagram for our rotational system and i would like to use this diagram to find out the transfer function which is tau s divided by theta 1s which is the conclusion for our present problem i want to repeat this portion once again because this portion is very very vital if you don't understand the procedure on how to convert this translational system into rotational system then you are not been able to understand the logic behind our problem this is our given problem and i have created the bridge in between our translational and rotational system if you have missed our previous videos regarding how to find out the analogous concept in between our translational and rotational system 
please do follow our previous videos on that videos i have thoroughly given you this crucial chart and by using this chart i have converted this present translational system into rotational system you can see over here so the force is being transferred into torque so force is being transferred into torque do follow my hands okay the force is converted into torque the next one is at the body of our m2 the linear displacement is happened on that body because of the applied force ft and i have replaced that factor with our angular displacement which is theta okay now come back to our body m2 for our translational system the mass is been present over there but for the rotational system i should consider mass along with our moment of inertia body the moment of inertia of the rotating body so that is been considered as a j2 okay and at the lower part the dashboard system is present for our translational system which is f2 but for our rotational system we do know that the because of the presence for our viscous fluid there is some viscous friction coefficient is present over there and that is equivalent with our dashboard for our translational system so these two are our equivalent so i can replace this factor with our same factor f2 which is nothing but the viscous friction coefficient under the body under the rotating body of our j2 now if you do consider the middle part or the common part in between our x1 and x i have got the dashboard which is one second replaced with our friction factor for our viscous fluid or for the presence of our viscous fluid which is f and the spring is present for our translational system and i have converted that uh, spring into our shaft stiffness which is the same for our rotation and translational system that is why i have written this as k now if you move on towards our another rotating block which is for our translational system that is a m1 so i have converted that mass or m1 into our another rotating body which is our j1 according to our chart mass moment of inertia and similarly for that body i have got another friction uh, factor is present over there which is for our translational system that factor is our f1 and for our rotational system according to the presence for our um, uh, viscous fluid the viscous friction coefficient is present under our rotating body which is f1 and lastly the k1 which is the spring stiffness for our translational system for our rotational system the shaft stiffness of k1 is present over here and on the body of our m1 the angular sorry the linear displacement is x1 for our translational system but for our rotational system the displacement should be our angular displacement which is theta1 so theta1 is replaced with x1 theta is replaced with x tau which is torque replaced with force f and rest of the the j2 is replaced with m2 and j1 is replaced with m1 and rest of the body will be same so this is our most important block diagram for our rotational system in our next step i would like to solve this diagram because i have converted the translational system into rotational system so i no longer consider this diagram so our next important block diagram should be this one so with this diagram i should find out the transfer function and after that i will do celebrate with our solution i want to give you two minutes to note down up to this one and after that i will do follow my next steps the time starts now
In our previous part of the video, we have successfully converted the translational system into rotational system. Now I just do require to shortly draw this diagram, the same diagram, because uh, that actually give me more space to find out the transfer function, which is our main destination. So let us do that. So I just do require to shorten this present diagram to have to find out to have some more space. Okay. So this is our J2. The torque is applied over here. Okay. Now the angular displacement theta is happened on the body J2 under this body the F2 is present. Okay. Now in our left hand side we have got the viscous friction coefficient which is F and the sharp stiffness is present which is K. I think I should draw in a more precise way that will be better. Okay. The shaft stiffness which is K. This one for our left hand diagram another rotating body is present over here which is J1. This is J1. Okay. And the angular displacement on that rotating body is been considered as theta 1 and for our left hand side I have got the shaft stiffness present over here which is K1. K1 and the solid body is present. Now I can erase this portion. Under our body, I think I should make it bigger, the two rotating body. This is J1. This one is our J2. Okay. And under this rotating body, because of the presence of our viscous fluid, the viscous friction under this body J2 should be our F2, this one. So the factor should be our F2, this is F2 and under this rotating body of G1, the F1 is present, okay and this is our solid body. So I can erase this block or this converted block this is our rotating system okay now we have considered the nodal method to find out the block diagram or to consider or to solve the present problem so i can as per our analysis i can detect our two block in our left hand block the theta is present and in our in our right hand block the theta is present and in our left hand block the another angular displacement is present over here which is theta 1 and I have considered the nodal method to solve the rotational system. So what is the diagram for that with our theta the J2 block is connected so I should connect the block of J2. Okay. Now the viscous friction coefficient under the rotating body of J2 is F2 is present over here. So I should connect that one. This is considered as our F2. Now 
the torque has applied on our body rotating body of j2 so this is our applied torque so this is done uh, i have considered or connected this j2 with our theta and the f2 is also connected with our theta as well in the middle part of our theta 1 and theta i have got two components are present in between our theta 1 and theta so let us do connect that once again in between our theta 1 and theta the two elements are present over there the one element is our viscous friction coefficient in between these two rotating body which is being considered as f this f and for our shaft stiffness in between our theta 1 and theta the shaft stiffness of k is present in between these two angular displacement of theta 1 and theta so let us do incorporate or include that factor over here what is that the k this is k now come back towards our theta 1 with our theta 1 the j1 the rotating body has connected over here this is j1 and under that rotating body the viscous friction coefficient of f1 is present over here you can see that so the f1 is connected this is f1 this one is f1 this one is j1 now the last element of k1 has connected which is the sap stiffness for our another rotating body of j1 so this is our k1 k1 now to connect our common ground for our overall circuit so this is our nodal diagram to solve or to get the transfer function for our torque or the body or the angular displacement at body g1 and what seems to be the ratio or transfer function factor the applied torque which is the input so output divided by input which is the factor and i have considered this ratio in the wrong way so according to the transfer function analogy the output is the output should be present at the numerator so what is the output i have considered the angular displacement at the body g1 seems to be our output so output which is theta 1 s that is the output divided by which one is our input the applied torque on that rotating body which is our input this is our ratio and that is the transfer function over here so in our previous parts do invert this ratio because that is the main factor or that is the main definition for our transfer function okay output divided by input okay and we are trying to find out this ratio from this given present rotational system so in our present step i have considered the nodal method to convert this mechanical rotational diagram into our nodal diagram to get the ratio of our transfer function of theta 1 s divided by tau s tau s means the applied torque on that rotating body and theta 1 s is nothing but the angular displacement on our rotating body j1 okay i want to give you two minutes to note down up to this one and after that i only do consider this diagram and erase this diagram as this diagram is no longer required for our analysis for our solution for our or for the analysis for our rotational system problem three so i can erase this diagram and i should use this lower diagram to get the transfer function for our present solution that is why i want to give you additional two minutes to note down after this one and after that i will do continue with my problems 
no one is doing this type of videos over here you can understand or you can feel that you can get the additional benefit just by using or just by following our videos so what are you waiting for please do subscribe our channel hit the bell icon for more updates and stay tuned with our channel and i want to remind you one important thing just improve or increase your concentration to follow this type of conceptual videos because this type of videos or conceptual subjects are altogether missing on any platform and i am doing it by my own style okay just increase your concentration level and do follow my videos from zero time to maximum time you will get the total package or total concepts to get my ideas okay the time starts now In our previous steps, we have completed or we have converted our translational system into rotational system. And after that, or after I have got the rotational system, I have finally converted that diagram into our nodal method analysis, which is being shown over here. Now we are going to use our some crucial differential equation 
to get the ratio of our transfer function which is output divided by input which is theta 1 s divided by tau s which is our main focus so let us do that so i no longer do require this diagram over here as i have converted this rotational diagram into our nodal method diagram so i am going to use this nodal diagram to get the final equation over here so let us do that i think i have covered up all the steps over here if you still have any doubts please let us know in the comment section for better understanding we will try our level best to improve your concepts so theta is connected with our j2 i'm just drawing this nodal diagram over here that will be better to draw the final concept this is our given torque and in our left hand side we have got f2 is present and in the common part we have got this is our theta 1 and at the common part we have got two elements or two passive elements are present over here so this is our f this has been connected and that uh, that is connected with our k as well or shaft stiffness k and the theta one is connected over here so this is being connected with our j1 and the viscous friction coefficient is present over here this is our f1 and the element of our k1 is present over here so this is our k1 so this is our diagram i have just uh, shown the diagram over here because i do require more space to find out the transfer function over here so let us do that i am only considering the theta expression over here uh, to get the first equation over here so i will do consider the node one so this is our node one and this is our node two so for our node one i am going to separately draw the diagram over here so at the node one the angular displacement is theta and j2 is connected over here so this is our j2 and the torque has applied at this point this is our tau which is nothing but the applied torque and that is connected with our friction factor which is our f2 and in the common part analogy in the common part analogy we have got this is 2 at the common part analogy we have got the viscous friction coefficient factor which is f is connected and the spring or shaft stiffness is connected over here so this is our k now get back to our final or first equation if you do follow our previous two analogies or two problems you will get my points I am going to use the D'Alembert principle. So apply torque minus rest of the elements are actually opposing the applied torque. That is why so that is why the rest of the expression should be in minus. So applied torque minus the moment of inertia j2 d theta divided sorry j2 d2 theta divided by dt2 the for the viscous friction coefficient i have got minus f2 d theta divided by dt okay for the next one the two common elements are present over here and it is present in between our node one and two as i have considered one as our reference so that is why the one should be greater compared with our two and at the two the said angular displacement is been considered as our theta one so what seems to be the equation the equation should be i have used the j2 so the this is done the f2 is already done and the f and k is present minus for the shaft stiffness 
minus k and the displacement is theta minus theta 1 why as I have considered 1 is our reference factor so I should consider this in a more precise way theta minus theta 1 as I have taken 1 as our reference so quite naturally the theta will be greater compared with our theta 1 and for the last one I have got the last one which is the f which is placed in between our theta and theta 1 f d dt of theta minus theta 1 which is is equal to ultimately the 0. Now I would like to transfer all these resistive torque elements to the another side that will be better. So what is the equation the torque which is J2 D2 theta divided by DT2 plus F2 D theta divided by DT plus K theta minus theta 1 plus F D DT of theta minus theta 1. So this is our equation if I do apply the D'Alembert principle equation or the concept of D'Alembert principle on our node 1 we have got this is our equation. So the next step is quite simple to find out the transfer function we do require to convert the time domain factor or time domain equation into Laplace domain or S factor. So this equation is our time domain equation. So let us do convert this time domain equation into Laplace domain. What is the methodology? The methodology is quite simple. If you have missed my previous videos, do follow that videos. On that videos, we have analyzed all those factors in a step by step way. So I am not going to repeat the same procedure over here. I am just going to use the equation only. If you do convert this time domain into Laplace domain, we have got tau s. This one is j2 s square theta s for the Laplace transform of this factor plus f2 s theta s if you do apply the Laplace transform over here plus k theta s minus theta 1 s this one plus f s theta s minus theta 1 s theta 1 s this is our equation now this equation is no longer required by me I am going to rearrange our Laplace transformed equation over here if you have missed my previous videos please do follow that videos on that videos we have given you all the crucial analogies over there now I have got I should uh, separately write these expressions over here that will be better so the equation is j2 s square theta s plus f2 s theta s plus k theta s minus k theta 1 s for this one plus f s theta s and the last one which is minus f s theta 1 s okay this is nothing but the tau s now i am going to separately consider the theta 1 s and theta s to do that i have simplify this expression over here and let us take the theta s and theta 1 s in a different way a different expressive way that will be better okay now what is the equation the equation is tau s if you take the common of theta s we have got theta s inside our bracket i have got this as j2 s square 
प्लस एफ टू एस दिस वन इज डन प्लस प्लस के दिस वन इज ऑल्सो डन दिस वन इज थीटो वन एस प्लस आवर एफ एस नाउ इफ यू टेक द कॉमन ऑफ आवर थीटो वन एस what is that so i have considered this expression this expression and this expression and two expressions are present over here what is that if you take the common of minus theta 1s inside our bracket i have got plus k1 sorry this k this k and plus fs so i have separately considered the theta s and theta 1s in our given equation i should uh, check that once again if i do take the common in our right hand side expression of our theta s i have got j2s square plus f2s plus k plus fs and if you take the common of our theta 1s for the rest of the expression i have got minus theta 1s this one should be k plus fs so this is our first equation if i do apply the d'alembert principle on node 1 for our rotational mechanical system i want to give you 2 minutes to note down after this one and after that i will do the same for the nodal 2 or node 2 for the configuration and after that i will do utilize these two expressions to get the final destination point which is our transfer function analogy okay the time starts now
in our previous step we have got our first equation just by applying the d'alembert principle on our node nodal node 1 and let us do the same for our node 2 as well so before i go into that i should uh, note down this equation because this equation is very very vital for our analysis okay so let us do that The equation seems to be this one tau s theta s inside our bracket we have got j2 s square plus f2 s plus k plus f s okay minus theta 1 is and inside our bracket we have got k plus f s now let us do the same for our node 2 first i will consider the individual diagram for our node 2 node 2 that is connected with our j1 over here that is connected with our viscous friction coefficient f1 as well and in the left hand side we have got the another element which is spring stiffness this k1 this is our k1 this one the shaft stiffness which is k1 is connected over here and at the common part we have got that is connected with our one we have got the viscous friction coefficient which is f and the last element is nothing but the shaft stiffness which is connected in between our one and two this one now let us consider the equation for our node 2 just by applying the d'alembert principle over here once again as you can see that no torque is applied on this part so the torque has applied on our nodal node 1 so all these elements are our resistive torque element so all the equations are in terms of negative sign as it is as it seems that it all elements are opposing our applied torque so our first equation is minus g1 d2 the angular displacement at our nodal node 2 is theta 1 and this one is theta always do mention these factors which are directly connected or directly have the relation okay minus g1 d2 theta 1 divided by d t2 this one is done minus f1 the viscous friction coefficient that is connected with our theta 1 over here f1 d theta 1 divided by dt for the shaft stiffness this k1 minus k1 theta 1 so these three are completed and rest of the two elements which are connected in between our two elements as i have considered the nodal 2 as our reference so the theta 1 should be greater compared with our theta 1 for the present condition so what is the equation for our k or shaft stiffness that is placed in between our 1 and 2 i have got minus k theta 1 minus theta as i have considered 2 as our reference or nodal 2 as our reference for the present condition which is theta 1 minus theta and for the last one we have got minus f for the viscous friction coefficient we have got minus f d dt of our factor theta 1 minus theta which is, is equal to 0. So this is our overall equation I want to consider this equation as well so for the g1 i have got this one 
the f1 is this one for the k1 this is this one and for the middle part as i have considered 2 as our reference for the present condition i have considered k theta 1 minus theta and uh, for the viscous friction also that will follow the same once again now if you transfer this minus in the another side of the equation all this equation will turn into positive so these equations are all plus okay if you take the minus for the whole expression and do transfer that minus at the another side of our equation which is nothing but the zero the equation is look like this one all the minus will become the plus or that will turn into positive this is the time domain equation if you do apply the d'alembert principle on our nodal 2 this is our time domain equation so the next step is we should convert the time domain equation into laplace domain so let us do that if you do apply the laplace domain for our present equation i have got the equation is j1 s square theta 1 s plus f1 s theta 1 s for this one plus k1 theta 1 s this one plus k theta 1 s minus theta s this one plus f s as ddt or derivative of that angular displacement factor is there that is been considered as f s inside our bracket we have got theta 1 s minus theta s which is equal to 0 and i should uh, write the equation in a more specific way that is why i am going to erase this equation as you can see that this may create only the confusion okay now i am going to write the equation in a more clearer way that will be better okay i have got g1 after conversion or after do apply the laplace transform on the time domain equation i have got this equation let let us refresh that once again which is j1 s square theta 1 s plus f1 s theta 1 s plus k1 theta 1 s okay plus k inside our bracket i have got theta 1 s minus theta s theta 1 s minus theta s okay and for the last element which is plus f s inside our bracket i have got theta 1 s minus theta s which is ultimately is equal to 0 this is our second equation if you do apply the d'alembert principle on our node 2 now let us separate the theta 1 and theta in our previous step as well so let us do that if you do large this factor for our equation don't get scared just by looking at this equation just do follow our videos from time 0 to maximum time or the most of the parts of the video do follow the most part of our video that will give you the best possible confidence to solve this type of problems okay theta 1 s plus f1 s theta 1 s plus k1 theta 1 s plus i am going to use it over here k theta 1 s minus k theta s for the last expression i have got plus f s theta 1 s minus f s theta s which is equal to 0 after this plus the equation continues like this this is our overall equation okay 
Now I should take the common of theta and theta 1s over here. So to do that, we just do erase this previous equation or previous part of the equation. And let us take the common of first the theta 1s. If you take the common of theta 1s or inside our bracket I have got j1 s square this is done plus f1 s this is done plus k1 this is also done theta 1 plus k plus k this is done plus fs this is also done and for the theta s if you do transfer this rest of the factor at the another side what is the equation which is equal to if you take the common of theta s i have got this minus and minus will turn into plus and if you take the common of that factor of or all that plus expression at the another side of the equation i have got theta s inside our bracket i have got k which is this one plus fs this is our equation for our second factor over here so first i have applied the d'alembert principle on, on our nodal to equation or node to equal expression after that i have got the time domain equation that is our first step and after i have applied the laplace transform on that time domain equation i have got the, or after i have rearranged those factors over there i have got this is our equation now i am going to give you another two minutes to note down up to this one and after that i will like to consider the transfer function or how to get this transfer function expression over here i hope uh, it is been better to say that i have given you the best possible way to love this subject over here so what are you waiting for please do subscribe our channel hit the bell icon for more updates and stay tuned with our channel and my ultimate suggestion is quite clear do follow our videos from time zero to maximum time you will absolutely get the total confidence to solve this type of problems okay the time starts now
at the last stage we have ultimately got these two equation over here and by using these two equation our ultimate aim is to find out this ratio which is output divided by input which is our theta 1 s divided by tau s so let us do that i have already got these two equations so i can erase the individual equation individual diagram over here now i am going to play with these two equation so from this expression i can write this equation into this way which is theta s is nothing but if you do transfer this factor at the another side of the equation i have got what is the expression the expression is theta 1 s inside our bracket i have got j1 s square plus f1 s plus k1 plus k k1 plus k plus f s divided by our this factor which is k plus f s okay so in the next step i only do replace this theta s factor at the equation one which is this one now i am going to write it over here the equation is tau s which is nothing but if you do put the theta s over here at the equation one i have got theta one s g1 s square plus f1 s plus k1 plus k plus f s the bigger one k plus f s multiplied with this factor as i have used this one multiplied with this whole factor that has been present at the numerator which is j2s square plus f2s plus k plus fs and minus this overall factor with minus theta 1s minus theta 1s k plus fs now if you take the common of our theta 1s for this overall expression i have got theta 1s inside our bracket the bigger one which is g1 s square plus f1 s plus k1 plus k plus f s and in the lower part i have got k plus f s the bigger one and this along with multiplied with this factor which is j2 s square plus f2 s plus k plus f s okay the bigger one the expression is uh, very very big j1 s square plus f1 s plus k1 plus k plus f s multiplied with this factor divided by this minus this whole factor minus minus our k plus f s this one this one if you take the common of a theta one s now ultimately i will i would like to solve this equation now inside our bracket if you take the simple subtraction of our expression what we will get let us see that 
so i no longer do require these all these uh, upper expression so i can erase as i have i am tend to or i am going to the final expression for our analogy i am i just simply subtract this factor of course this is nothing but the tau s which is equal to this whole factor now which is equal to inside our bracket theta 1 s i have got if you take the subtraction for this whole factor i have got in the lower part i have got k plus f s and for the upper part i have got this bigger one which is g1 s square plus f1 s plus k1 plus k plus f s this is the first one the next one is j2 s square plus f2 s f2 s plus k plus f s plus f s this is the second factor minus this is squared as this is been taken as minus you should do it by your own hands to understand this point because this is simple subtraction you can see that the expression is very very bigger but uh, don't get confused over here just do it by your own hands to understand the total factor which is minus this squared which is k plus f s squared k plus f s and squared whole squared now ultimately our aim is to find out theta 1 s divided by tau s so these will totally inverted and after the inversion the final transfer function expression is output which is theta 1 s divided by tau s and this numerator will become the denominator and denominator will become the numerator from the from this expression why because ultimately if you do follow the definition for our transfer function we can we do know that the output divided by input which seems to be this expression will be inverted so this will become the denominator will become numerator and numerator will become the denominator so ultimately the final expression is i am going to take the longer space which is this will become the denominator will become the numerator which is k plus f s that is present at the numerator and in the denominator portion we have got this whole thing which is j1 s square plus f1 s plus k1 plus k plus f s multiplied with j2 s square plus f2 s plus k plus f s the whole thing is our denominator minus k plus f s squared so this whole thing is our denominator over here so this is our final answer that we are looking forward to from our time zero to maximum time okay this is our final answer over here and i i can say this is our numerator for our expression and this is our denominator for our whole expression hope you have understood our total analogy over here if you still have any doubts please let us know in the comment section uh, for more updates if you have any doubts regarding our any part of the expression please let us do understand or do let us know we will try our level best to improve your concepts finally
we have completed our solution so stay tuned with our channel hit the bell icon for more updates and do subscribe our channel because this type of videos though i do know that the videos may be getting longer but if you do follow my whole videos you can get my point on how to solve all these problems in a step by step manner because that is very very essential for the electrical or electrical related subjects finally the this is our final statement so that's it thank you and goodbye If you like my video, so what are you waiting for? Please do subscribe my channel, hit the bell icon for more updates, and stay tuned to the channel. Thank you and goodbye.